welcome back to Crimes from the East. I'm your host Pia and with me is Alex. Hello Alex. Hello. Hello. How's it going? That's how your name would probably be pronounced in Kerala. Alex. How have you been? Oh, you know, I'm surviving. You're surviving the blazing hot heat wave over Europe? Psh, that's that's child's play for me. What I'm surviving is a mustard shortage in France. <laughs> mustard shortage, a global crisis. The shelves are empty. There's no Dijon to be found. How are people living? Is there absolute know. chaos, mayhem in the streets? Yeah, there is, actually. <laughs> Civil war in France? I feel like this is the true sign of the beginning of the end. If there's no mustard in France, then, like, we're doomed. What do you do with your Cuban sandwiches? You can't have any. Yeah. No mutard. Um, Yikes. Yeah, so I found out because of this that... France gets a lot of its mustard from Canada. Well, it's seeds to, like, make mustard. And mm -hmm. Canada suffered from drought or heat wave or, I don't know, some climate change-related phenomenon that reduced its mustard seed yield. And voila, here we are, mustardless. And I, like, I haven't needed mustard until I found out that it was not available. And now I'm, like, dying for it. So now you absolutely need to have it. Exactly. I'll mail you some. <laughs> I'll spend fifty dollars shipping Please. you a five dollar jar of mustard. <laughs> so anyone listening out there, you might want to stock up. You might want to stock up because uh, it's starting here, but it's gonna spread. There's gonna be like a mustard apocalypse. I mean, forget toilet paper. Well, actually, no one really needs toilet paper, so truly do forget toilet paper. Yeah. Forget drinking water or canned <laughs> food. No. Mustard. Forget bread, rice, <laughs> fruits, vegetable grain. No, 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 no. If you want to get prepping, <laughs> start with shells of mustard. Mustard. <laughs> I mean, it might be liquid gold at some point. At some point. I don't know what I would pay, but. Like maple syrup, blech. Maple yeah. syrup is so, you know, blase now. Mustard is where the where the money is apparently so i'm surprised that france doesn't have a stockpile of mustard seems like really mm -hmm. short-term thinking on their part but i do know that canada where they usually get their mustard from does stockpile maple syrup mm. they're ready mm. that's True smart facts. smart very smart of canada yeah. i wonder what like india would stockpile a char Pickles. Yes, that's what I thought of too. A char. We need a char with every meal. We need it. A char and garam masala. Stockpile. Piles of it. Yeah. Well, we've had extreme weather here too. Heat wave and then thunderstorms and rain. And so we haven't really done anything gone anywhere. The world's on fire. But I played a new game. Ooh. So you finished um, the little chefy game, little chefin. I mean, there's no end to that. You can just play it forever, right? It's online. Okay, okay. But you moved on. I played a new game that is just so goddamn cute. It's called Stray. <gasps> you play as, as a, a stray cat. kitten. I've seen this game. I really want to play. How is it? It was brilliant. It is absolutely brilliant. So unexpected and so new, fresh, like the story, the whole storyline. You cannot imagine this stuff. A, you are a kitten who falls down into this oh. underground sewage system where there's an entire colony of old robots that are breaking down because humans abandoned them there. And what? all they want to do is <laughs> climb up to the surface and escape. So you kind of help them. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, cool. Yeah. You get to scratch doors and carpets, which I found annoying, but people who have cats love that stuff, I guess. <laughs> You're a like kitten with a backpack with a gun. <laughs> that was my week. Beating the sun. Beating the sun, staying out of it. I'm allergic to the sun, especially this year. Mm. I have realized uh, I'm slowly turning into a vampire. <laughs> I can't be outside without really heavily polarized sunglasses. I literally can't see anything. It's so bright for me. Wow. And now I have like itchy rashes on me if I go out in the sun for like mm. more than 20 minutes. So I'm probably literally turning into a vampire. 
Maybe this is like the next step in the evolutionary process for humans with climate change. Mm -hmm. This is how we turn into mole people. You are the missing link. (laughs) I'm patient zero. I'm the mole person. It all starts with me. This is how we go underground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Where do you think we're traveling to today for today's case? Oh, can you riddle me a riddle? (laughs) Okay, it's bordering Bengal, Bihar. Oh my god. Does that help Andhra Pradesh? I don't think that helps you at all, Alex. (laughs) Okay, it starts with an O. Orissa. Yes! Yes! You got it. Okay, I don't know where the heck it was, but I know that it exists. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed you even know the name of the state. Good job, Alex. I need to make that like one of my special talents. Although it won't seem that special since I'm half Indian. They're going to be like, you should know this, but we'll pretend. I will correct you, though. The name has been changed in recent years from Orissa to Odisha. 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 Oh, okay. Today's case is from the Indian state of Odisha on the east coast of India. Okay. It is a culturally rich state where ancient arts and crafts are still alive and well, from the Pattachitra painting, very intricate art form. Mm -hmm. Sambalpur weave saris. They have absolutely beautiful scenes from the Mahabharata and Ramayana and whatnot, woven in gold silk threads onto saris. Oh my god, I want one. Sounds awesome. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Wow. Don't forget the elegance of the ancient Odissi dance form Mm. with origins more than 2,000 years ago. Dang. It is possibly one of India's oldest classical dance forms. Ooh, I'm going to have to look this up. I love Indian classical dance. Oh, so you remember Michael Jackson's video for Black and White? Mm Mm-hmm. And he does this little step with an Indian classical dancer? Uh Uh-huh. Na-na-na-na-na-na. That's Odissi. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a beautiful dance form. Very elegant. I mean, it's been around for 2,000 years. That's a beautiful piece of our culture and history that's still alive today. Yeah, that's awesome. Not surprisingly, it was banned <laughs> during our colonial era because the colonial devs thought it was too sensuous, too much moving. Those damn women. Oh, it made them feel things that they were not comfortable feeling. <sighs> yeah, they were like down with all this culture (laughs) and it was almost wiped out but a lot of the odyssey masters passed it on to their pupils in secret okay good for them good for them and made sure that it came back the revival was successful and it is still going on today which is amazing yeah thanks thanks krishna for that india's first k-pop star shreya lenka who will be part of the korean group black swan is from odisha I didn't even know that that was a thing. There's going to be an Indian K-pop star. Yes. They auditioned for new members, and I think they got Shreya from India and another girl from Brazil. Oh, nice. Uh, This is the, like, dance fusion that I need to see more of, though, is the Indian-Brazilian. Oh, yeah, yeah. I want to figure out, like, how to do that and if it exists, because I feel like there's a lot of cool stuff going on in both places. Yeah. Very unique dance forms. And then you throw in K-pop on top of that? Sorry. That's just, that's wild. Now, I don't follow any K-pop. I have no idea about what's good. (laughs) They all sound the same to me. I'm sorry. (laughs) There's like 20 band members in every group. I don't know what's going on. I guess it's not for me. K-pop is very popular in India, by the way. Yeah, I can imagine. Makes sense. So, Odisha, the state, has always been a significant mover and shaker in the history of ancient India. Many kings of different faiths waged wars to gain control of these lands. So even today, the cultures and traditions of Odisha are a melting pot consisting of Hindu, Vedic, Buddhist, Jain, and indigenous tribal influences. In fact, Odisha has the third largest population of tribal people in the country. No wonder that their arts and crafts are so extraordinary. Yeah. Now, I can't mention Odisha and not talk about the world-famous Jagannath Temple in Puri. That actually rings a bell. Jagannath Temple. After last week's 
comment, well, last episode's comment on Bear Grylls and the jungle jungly thing. <laughs> I made it a point to put this in there that FYI, the English word juggernaut is derived from the word juggernaut. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But why? The colonial devs witness the glorious annual Rathiyatra or chariot procession where the main deity of the Jagannath temple would be carried in a massive chariot weighing like, I don't know, 65, 70 tons pulled by devotees okay. on the streets. Yeah. So that's where the origin of the word comes from when you have the weight of it all Is that on your what shoulders. Juggernaut means actually? I always just imagine it, I think from a video game as like a type of like, you know, steampunk like heavyweight, <laughs> yeah, a steampunk thing. <laughs> There are so many words in English that have Indian origins. So, you know, either Hindi, Urdu, or Sanskrit origins. And no one knows. We never get the credit. The English are really not creative because a lot of English words also are originally French or German. Yeah. (laughs) It's also diluted. Like I said, the English, very good at borrowing things and never returning it. Never returning them. (laughs) Just, you know, go into or forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, and last tip, if you want to rile up a person from Odisha, (laughs) just tell them that Rasagulla is a Bengali sweet. And then you better duck because you might get punched in the face. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. Odias are very touchy about their beloved sweet, which has been mislabeled as a Bengali Bengali sweet for centuries. Yeah. I mean, they can kind of have it, right? They're neighboring states, so it's not a surprise that the cultures are blended and the food is a little similar. But maybe if you've always been the one who invented it and you never got recognition for it, you would feel like how we bitch about those words. Yeah. No, I mean, like on the scale of favorite thing or Indian sweets, I I like a rasgulla, but I know a lot of people find it gross. I love it. I love it. It is one of my favorites. I like that it's kind of squeaky. Know what I mean? It is squeaky. It's like uh, chewing on a piece of uh, foam, kind of, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Sounds so appetizing, right? So yummy. (laughs) Yum, 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 yum. Okay, so there's a little point of contention there. Good to know. People went to jail over this, by the way, in the last five years. People have gone to jail because they claimed... Rasagullahs are Bengali and they had a whole, you know, feud over this. <laughs> so it's serious business out there. Damn. And apart from the cultural diversity, there's also biodiversity in the various national parks of the state. Similipal National Park has Bengal tigers. I wonder how they feel about that. Not Orisha tigers, right. or Bengal tigers. Bison, leopards, boars, and also 96 varieties of indigenous orchids. Ooh, Wow. There are some really good resorts near the park where you can stay, enjoy the local cuisine, tribal dance and music, and get to see the wildlife in guided tours. I know we're going on holiday next. To go see Orisha on my next Indian trip. Yeah. Unassuming, Mm -hmm. very humble, modest. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't brag about all this, but when I looked into it, I was like, damn, this is beautiful. I want to go see this, eat their food, see the experience. Are we blowing up another, like, secret gem of India? Maybe. (laughs) Right now. (laughs) <laughs> but i i trust our listeners we we have good listeners so if they do go they're not going to be like littering and you know ruining it all don't tell your I'm friends i'm sure they'll be mindful <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so now that we've unraveled some of the beautiful and amazing things about orisha let's get to the case at hand shall we yeah today we talk about the patnagar parcel bomb case Ooh. Okay. It's a tale of how an innocent young man was killed by someone lurking in the shadows for a reason that still makes no sense and reeks of sociopathic narcissism at best. Okay. Interesting. On the 23rd of Feb 2018, newlyweds Saumya Shekhar Sahu and Rima Sahu were in the kitchen pondering over what to make for lunch as Saumya's 85-year-old grand-aunt Jummy Money watched over them. The happy couple had just been married five days ago and were on break from work, so a lazy afternoon at the parents' home was nothing short of bliss. You know, just chilling out, hanging out at home. Their only worry was what to eat for lunch. What a beautiful Yeah. What a beautiful day. I just love the idea. Wait, did you say they had just gotten married? No. 
five days ago. So this was isn't there a honeymoon? Kind of, yeah. Maybe they were going on honeymoon later. Okay. Samia's father, Rabindra Sahu, had gone to Delhi to drop off his daughter at the airport. And Samia's mother, Sanjukta Sahu, was away at work because she was the principal of a junior college called Jyoti Vikash College in Bhoinsa. These three are the only ones at home. Okay. At 12.45 p.m., as Rima and Samia agreed on grilling eggplant and making lentils or dal for lunch, they heard the clang of the metal gate in front of the family bungalow. They saw a delivery man bringing in an ordinary-looking cardboard box. Samya went out, collected the box, and brought it into the kitchen. He put it down, read the label, and wondered about its origins and its purpose. It was from someone called S.K. Sharma from Raipur, and it was addressed to Samya. Where's Raipur? Raipur is in Chhattisgarh, so it's a neighboring state. Okay. He opened the box and found something inside wrapped in green paper and tied up with a white string. His grand-aunt Jamimani Devi walked over and stood behind Somya to see what was inside. She was curious, mm-hmm. like, what's in the box? This is what happens Normal. in all Desi households. <laughs> yes, I don't know about other households, but in Desi households, any package is a family affair. I mean, that's me. I'm this grandmother. What's in the box? <laughs> Presents? Something for me? There's no expectation of privacy at all. Whatever a box comes in the home, the whole family's got to see what's in there. Okay. I don't know anyone in Raipur. Maybe this is a wedding gift, uttered Soumya, before he pulled on the deadly white string. A devastating explosion rang out, destroying everything in the kitchen, cracking up the concrete walls, and even blew away the kitchen window into a neighbor's field. It sounds massive. Wow. Big. There's no mm-hmm. small explosion. Wait, so the grandma was right behind? And the wife was to the side. And Rima was in there. So everyone's in the room with the bomb. Distraught neighbors rushed in and saw the three sahus lying collapsed on the floor, badly injured from the blast and writhing in pain. <sighs> Jami Mani Devi's clothes were on fire. <gasps> The neighbors thought that it was some kind of a gas tank explosion because of how powerful it had been. Yeah. Save me. I think I'm dying. Were the last words heard from Saumya Shekhar Sahu as they were all rushed to the hospital. 86-year-old Jamimani and 26-year-old Saumya Sahu were declared dead on arrival with more than 90% burns on their bodies and catastrophic injuries that they could never have recovered from. 22-year-old Rima Sahu was the only survivor, but she too suffered from 40% burns on her entire upper torso and was in hospital for weeks recovering from this horrific nightmare. That parcel had a bomb intended to bring death and destruction on whomever opened it. Who would do such a thing and why? Pia, who would do such a thing and why? Actually, though... Like, who are their enemies? What? What's the backstory here? Odisha police were called in, and they were baffled by the unusual nature of this crime, especially because the main target victim, Saumya, was an educated young man who had no known enemies. His entire family was well-educated and didn't have any seedy dealings that may invite risk or trouble like this. Mm. It made no sense. It made no sense. Somya Shekhar Sahu was a software engineer and he had worked with infotech companies in Mysore and Chandigarh before joining a Japanese electronics firm in Bengaluru just two months before this event. So sounds like a normal young man. Promising career. Yeah. Working, living, being a normal dude. Cheerful and optimistic Rima had recently graduated with an Odia language degree and was the light of her parents' lives. Her father had adopted her from his brother because him and his wife desperately wanted a girl child after having two sons. Oh, that's nice. I find that so sweet. It's very refreshing. Coming from a country where female infanticide is high, levels are yeah. just way too high. This, this is such a sweet paradox to that, you know, where someone desperately wants a daughter. I just love hearing that. Mm-hmm. So Somya and Rima had been introduced through the cogs of arranged marriage by their 
families and had gotten engaged a year ago in 2017. They got along well and were very excited to get married. You can see from their pictures that they were a very handsome couple with the rest of their lives ahead of them. Who would want to do this to them? Cute couple. Like you can tell they seem excited, Mm -hmm. happy. She's pretty. So the police looked into it. There were no scorned lovers left in the lurch that the cops could find responsible for this heinous crime. Because it seemed very angry, very unforgiving, yeah. this crime. Mm-hmm. Now, Rima remembered a strange call that Samia had gotten a month before the wedding. It was from some man who warned him not to marry Rima. And the couple ignored this silly call, but the police considered it a clue. They traced the number to someone who was infatuated by Rima and was upset on hearing news of her impending wedding. Okay. He was given a polygraph test and grilled by the cops, and there really was nothing more to it than that call. He was just a roadside Romeo, not a sadistic killer. Still not great. Sidebar. (laughs) This is actually very common in India. Okay. You don't even have to have a relationship or even know the guy for him to think he has some claim over you. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, oh, you're getting married. How dare you? Yeah, you to me, I was like, mine. this sounds pretty weird. You're being a bit like casual about it, but that makes sense. So that's just kind of a thing. Okay. Whenever some girl's getting married, there'll be calls like, don't marry her. She sucks. She's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Just jealous incel losers. <laughs> Ooh. In many cases, the women don't even know they exist. They'd have no idea who these guys are. Yeah. It's just toxic masculinity. Okay. So the cops, they went to Raipur where the package had come from. The address on that thing was from a courier company called Sky King Courier. The name and address of SK Sharma on the parcel was obviously fake. Mm -hmm. There was no CCTV at the courier office and nobody really remembered too much about the man who had mailed the bomb. He had paid the price of rupees 400 or roughly $6 to mail this bomb from Raipur to Patnagar. The stranger had come in asking to mail some sweets to Soumya and handed over the cardboard box to them. The parcel then made a 400-mile journey on three buses before reaching Patnagar on 20th of February. How did it not go off before then? Must have been a very specific trigger. It's still a bomb. Yeah. So it could have gone off at any point. So this incident happened on the 23rd of Feb. But the bomb had actually reached Patnagar 20th of Feb. So what had happened is that the delivery man had returned from delivering the package with the package in his hand because he saw a big marriage reception going on at the Sahu home. Oh, so it would have been delivered on the wedding day. On the wedding day, while the reception was going on. But like, would the present have been opened on the wedding day, even if it was received on that day? So it's not uncommon. In certain communities, people actually open all the gifts at the wedding. (laughs) It's so cringy. But someone will have a mic and they'll actually say out loud what the gift is and from whom it is. Oh my God, I hate that. And then some third person is actually writing all of this down, like making a list. Right. This is how the families keep a track of who gave what so that when they go to a wedding. They know. In that family, they're like, we have to give something of equal or higher value. (laughs) Oh, I hate that. So much pressure. Yeah. My gifts are always the worst in these situations. Normally, I'm like, actually... A very good gift giver, but when I'm put on the spot and there's like a competition almost to do it, that's when I choke. Yeah, I hate gift giving. I don't like I don't like the whole idea anymore. I used to give tons of gifts, but I'm anti materialism now and I'm like, I don't want to give people things they probably don't need. Yeah. So food. I love giving consumable gifts. I'll give you coffee, I'll give you chocolate, I'll give you some fancy olive oil or something, but (laughs) I'm not giving you things. Yeah, I have to be in the right mood for gift giving. So the delivery man took the gift back on the 20th because he saw the wedding reception. Three days later, the guy finally delivered the parcel at the Sahu home gate. Mm -hmm. So Odisha police were stumped. They couldn't find any new solid leads in the month after the blast. 
They had questioned every known friend, relative, and acquaintance of the family to no avail. The case was soon handed over to the elite cops division of the state called the crime branch, which we have heard of in many other cases. So every state has that elite group called the crime branch. Mm -hmm. Highly or specially trained detectives who come in when the case is complex or dangerous. So this was one of those out of the blue cases where there doesn't seem to be any tangible motive to harm the victim. This case could have stalled and turned into a cold case if not for what happened next. Not even two months later, in April, the police chief of Balangir received an anonymous printed letter in English inside a white envelope simply marked as important letter. (laughs) That's it. Oh boy. (laughs) Trying to be ominous, but... (laughs) Looking kind of (laughs) dumb. It wasn't very creative. He's like, important letter, okay? Don't throw this in the trash. Very, very important. Okay. I'm going to read that letter. Was it like out of cut up newspaper letters? and? Oh, no. Just print it on a printer. (laughs) It was lazy work. Lazy work. Someone who clearly felt very safe sent this. Oh, my gosh. You have to read this in your most regional accent. Indian accent? accent? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do this in an Indian English accent, okay? Which is my normal accent when I'm not trying to do the American one. So I'm not making fun of anyone. This is how I would speak in India. It says, SP Sir, it is Patnagar blast case. A special messenger is sent to drop this letter to you. Parcel was sent in the name of SK Sina, not RK Sharma. That man had taken Aadhaar card in the same name. Three men were undertaking the project in Raipur. Not two. Hmm. They are far away now, where police cannot reach. The reason for this blast is his betrayal, which took life and crores of rupees. As we know, going to law is of no proper value. So, step was taken. Step was taken. No one does such thing for small loss. Even killing that whole family cannot compensate our loss. You are requested to remain silent and help us reconcile the matter at this level. Please don't harass innocent people, doubting and asking them unnecessary questions. Ooh, it's very mysterious. (laughs) The tone is so weird in this letter. It's It's like very polite. Yeah, it starts off polite, a little passive aggressive, and then ends with just full on like threatening. (laughs) crores of rupees and life like what but i don't know what he's talking about like give us some context here what are the three people not the two like what's huh big question mark crime branch chief arun botra he mulled over this letter for days and deduced quite a few things from it creating a psychological profile of the bomber he noted that the bomber had bothered to correct the name on the parcel from sharma to sinha which was totally unnecessary. He went back and figured that the cops, when they had seen the label on the box, it was just scribbled like a scrawl. Yeah. And they had interpreted it as R.K. Sharma. And that's what they had put down in the report. But that's not the name that the bomber had intended to put. It was S.K. Sinha. And he corrected them in the letter about that. (laughs) It's like, you're on the wrong track. Let me put you on the right track for a second here. Both names are fake, by the way, so I don't know how it matters. Maybe this, again, I only because you said this at the top, but we're talking about a sociopathic narcissist. So I guess, like, doesn't want any of his, like, or her plan to be misconstrued or underestimated or something. This is what police chief noted, that the correction was unnecessary. And it also incriminated him as someone who had full unpublished knowledge of the case details yeah right these are not the things they had released to the public at all Mm. by mentioning a messenger who had come to give the letter and three men the bomber was trying to distance himself from the crime and trying to obfuscate the truth about this being the work of one man alone okay so this is all diversionary information no one was talking about this being the work of two men or five men or anything yeah the cops actually thought it was one man But he's trying to confuse them and be like, oh, it's not two men, it's three. They're like, we didn't even say it was two men. So (laughs) (laughs) what's going on? 
The aggressive tone at the end was meant to threaten the cops and into leading them to think that this was some sort of a mafia hit or an organized crime yeah. hit. Forensic detectives found traces of fingerprints on the envelope, but they couldn't match it to any known offender. Okay, that must be hard in India. There is still no DNA database in India officially, and I think it's highly necessary. In a country of that number, you, you need a felon DNA database. Yeah, it just seems like a Goliathian undertaking. That's true. The forensic detectives also looked for traces of saliva on the stamp and the envelope seal, but it appeared that the bomber had not licked either and used glue instead. Okay. So seems like someone is kind of being careful, mm -hmm. trying to cover mm -hmm. their tracks, not make silly mistakes. Police Chief Botra sent a copy of the letter to Soumya's parents to see if they could make any sense of it or find any clues there. When Soumya's mother, Sanjukta Sahu, read the letter, she couldn't tell what the hell was being talked about. Yeah. As the family had no property dispute, nor any run-ins with mafia types or been in any kind of feud with someone over property and money and crores of rupees. But then something caught her eye. A phrase. A way of writing that seemed oddly familiar to her. Is it the step will be taken? And that was the term undertaking the project. It said three men were undertaking the project in Raipur, not two. So that's the term that caught her eye. Mm -hmm. Her world came crashing down when she recognized it as something her colleague Punji Lal Meher would say often at the Jyoti Vikash College where she worked. She mentioned this to the police and at once they zeroed in on the man. Now Meher had been questioned by the police already, owing to the animosity he had shown Sanjukta at the college over office politics over the years. Okay. Sanjukta had joined Jyoti Vikash College in 2014 and she was nominated as the new principal in 2017 replacing Punjilal Meher because she had extensive experience and was found better suited for the role. Mm -hmm. So this guy had been the principal mm -hmm. since 2014, right? For three years. And then all of a sudden she's nominated. Obviously for a reason, because you don't change principles within like two, three years. There must have been something he was doing very wrong. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why they put Sanjukta in his mm -hmm. place. This shattered the dreams of 49-year-old Punjilal oh, Meher, no. who considered it practically his right at the time yeah. of being the principal, after having worked at the college for like a decade by that time. After all, how could a woman replace him like that? How dare they? He was gravely offended, and his obsessive hate was clear to see. He wrote filthy things about Sanjukta on the walls of the college toilets. Oh. And often fought with her in public. Yuck. He threatened Sanjukta with physical violence in her office once. But then came a lull. He quietened down in public and people thought maybe, maybe he's reconciled his feelings over the matter finally. Maybe mm. he's given up. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm -mm. this should have been a flag. They should have been big question marks. Someone needed to go knock on the door. Like, hey, crazy. What you up to in there? Can we look in your back rooms for a bit? This tryhard sociopath had other plans. For eight months, he meticulously planned and schemed and prepped to derail and destroy Sanjukta. He knew he had to hit her where it hurt the most, and that was by hurting her son, Soumya. The wedding was a perfect opportunity for him, as many people would be sending in gifts for the couple, and so he put into action his plan on mailing the fatal present. Now, Meher had prepared the bomb by utilizing parts from Diwali fireworks. Okay. Lots of gunpowder, I guess. Yes, lots of gunpowder. Are we going to get back to why he chose to send it to the wedding? So on Feb 19th, this is, which is the day before he mailed the package, mm -hmm. 
He had taught a class in the college. He came home, left his cell phone there, and then later in the evening, took the lethal box, got on his bike, leaving his car at home. Mm -hmm. He's really covering his tracks. And headed to the train station. There, he illegally boarded a train and took the two-hour-long train ride to Raipur City. So why, why did he just hop on the train instead of buying a ticket? What is he doing here? Traveling illegally and, you know, leaving his phone at home and everything. Sounds like he's trying to cover his tracks. The train's ticket counter had CCTV. <gasps> oh, and he didn't want to be caught okay, on camera. Okay. So he just boarded the train, stood by the door, and got off in Raipur. Okay. After he mailed the box in Raipur, Meher returned back to Odisha the very same day so as to not arouse any suspicion. And he was in bed by midnight. So no one was wiser to what the hell he did that day. It's um like crazy to think about spending, what did you say? It was like eight months planning. Because you know that so much of that time is just like sitting in a chair, or sitting in a car, fuming and like... Oh, I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her. I'm going to how am I going to get, you know, like just so much because it doesn't take eight months to plan something like this either. It was just him fuming and festering and marinating in the bitterness and the hate. Exactly. He sounds super scary, like someone who writes nasty shit on a bathroom wall. It's so like cowardly and then also aggressive behavior confrontational towards her like the whole picture is pretty like yuck he was the bomb ticking away waiting to explode meher was taken into custody on april 25th so just like days after the whole letter thing came out <laughs> so that really backfired <laughs> what a dumbass and he actually confessed to the crime, telling the police all the details of his planning. Of course. Which, again, <laughs> all narcissists do. Can't keep their mouth shut. The cops confiscated all the electronics in Punjilal Meher's home, including his laptop, computer, phones, thumb drives, and the printer. The computers and phones were sent to Israel for recovering deleted data. And the printer was sent to a forensic lab in Gandhinagar, Gujarat. They sent it all the way to Israel? You know, I found that very weird myself. First of all, why Israel? Yeah. And second of all, why outside of India anyway? Right. You're telling me India doesn't have computer professionals who can recover deleted <laughs> data? Are you insane? It's so weird. You can literally go to any little back alley in any Indian city or town and you'll find... And find someone. Yeah. Someone who can hack into anything, including iPhones, yeah. within like 10 minutes. Right. So I don't know why this had to go to Israel. Boo. And another sidebar, there seems to be some excellent forensic labs in Gandhinagar. And damn, if I still lived in India, I'd be all over this place looking for a job. Clearly not, since they sent all the work to Israel. So if you're young in India looking for a career, looking for a field to get into, think about all these forensic labs in Gandhinagar. You could or be at the forefront <laughs> of crime solving. Do not move to Israel. <laughs> no, don't don't do become that. part of the kidding. problem. Do not. Mm -mm. Um, yeah. So the Gandhinagar lab matched the printer to the important letter. <laughs> and the Israeli company recovered tons of online research and found downloaded instruction on Meher's computer for making homemade bombs. <laughs> it's like Googling how to, how to get away with murder, how to dispose of a body, how to build a bomb. So police also recovered small test bombs and spots of gunpowder all around his home, which matched the chemical composition of the bomb that was sent to Soumya. In fact, Meher even volunteered to demonstrate how he made the bomb and successfully made a decoy bomb for the cops under strict supervision, of course. I'm calling a nerd alert on this guy. Like, what a dork. I hope the cops didn't give him, like, real gunpowder and stuff. <laughs> I wonder if he thought he could just, like, bomb his way out of the situation. Oh, I don't doubt it for one second. He probably thought, I'll make a real bomb and, like, get out of here. Diaries were found in his home where he professed his hatred of Sanjukta and for the need of revenge. Hmm. All of a sudden, I, I, he doesn't sound very smart to me anymore. He sounds basic. 
Odisha police discovered in the course of their investigation that Meher had first gone to DTDC, which is a popular courier service all over India. But he had left the place in a panic when the employee there had refused to take the parcel without seeing what's inside first, which is standard practice in India, by the way. Most courier companies will not just take your sealed package. They have to see what, what it is that they're going to be carrying. Really? Yes. Like they'll look inside the box? Yes. They will. No sending illicit items. You can't send people questionable things without at least feeling some embarrassment in front of the career company. They may not say no, but they have to see what it is. (laughs) Madam, what is this? (laughs) So Meher stood in a lineup where the career company employees pointed him out to the cops as the man who had come to mail the package. Now, he was charged with multiple charges under the Explosive Substances Act and also under Section 307 for attempted murder and 302 for murder. Odisha police seemed to have a solid case for these charges and were able to get the court to deny him bail while awaiting trial. As far as I can tell, the case is still ongoing and we do not have a verdict yet. Because, you know, court cases go on for years and years, sometimes decades Mm -hmm. in India. So 2018 is still fairly fresh, fairly new. Yeah. In jail, Meher tried to teach the inmates English. He probably wanted to be the principal there too, I (laughs) Just somebody make him the principal. You are the principal of your cell. (laughs) Congratulations. He just wants to be the boss. He just wants to be in a position of power no matter where he is. Mm -hmm. However, the inmates at the jail beat his ass <laughs> <laughs> and he had to be taken to the hospital. Good. Now, we don't condone any kind of violence, so I feel bad laughing at this, but also intrigued because it could very well be his feeble attempt at escaping from jail. Me thinks. He wants like a crew. He's trying to get his like spoon crew together, teach them English. In Jan of 2019... Jail authorities at Patnagar sub-jail claimed that Punjilal Meher had staged, managed, and prepared the blueprints for the escape of seven dacoits from their jail. But their attempts were foiled by security personnel. So seven dacoits and this Punjilal guy were trying to get away from jail, and this guy's the one who planned the whole thing. <laughs> He's a regular, like, you know, 40s-style oh. ragamuffin come on, boys, let's get ourselves out of here kind of character. The Beagle Boys. <laughs> He's like the <laughs> leader of the Beagle Boys. From the sound of it all, it seems like this guy binge-watched all seasons of CSI and just went for whatever he needed or wanted. He's like, I know how it works now. He would have possibly gotten away with it too if he hadn't sent that stupid important letter. He really did himself in. Yeah, that was so dumb. Like, the cops had no idea who had done this. And even if they had their suspicions about him, they wouldn't have had probable cause to go looking into his house and stuff. I just, I don't see it. What, like, the thing that led them to the house was in the letter. Would they have found any other evidence to connect? Although, I don't know. If I were the mom, I'd be like, oh, maybe that psycho guy that I work with. Maybe. You know, I feel like Mm. she would have gotten there eventually because as a mother, you're going to, like, search through... The entire history of your kid, of yourself, look like for any little possible explanation. And she didn't have to look far because this man made her life hell for years. Exactly. So I feel like maybe she would have gotten there anyways, but this letter certainly helped. Punjilal Meher and his attorney claim that he has been framed for this murder and that the whole letter was actually fake and they added in that undertaking the project bit because he says it a lot in order to frame him way too specific no i'm sorry and also way too like what the hell does he think he is like everyone's just yeah. gunning for him like, like who, who does he think he is you think cops need to do this they can just close the case or leave it cold it's india after all no one's gonna question that but there's a conspiracy because he's the best principal in the world but the world can't handle that kind of principling clearly so they had to get him It's the Illuminati. The Illuminati got him. (laughs) So the BBC did a bunch of really good articles on this case. And I highly recommend anyone who wants more information to go check them out. Just Google Patnagar parcel bomb case and BBC. 
I'll quote one of the articles talking about Punji Lal's online persona prior to the crime. And I think it gives a perfect picture of what a try-hard okay. wannabe this man is. Okay? This is what BBC says. In his Facebook posts, Mr. Meher is usually dressed in formal suits and blazers, a mark of an upwardly mobile man. He wears a gold watch, a prominent gold ring, and shiny ties, belts, Tacky. and shoes. In one picture, he sits astride a motorcycle wearing an orange shirt and sunglasses. In other pictures, he's giving away medals at college award functions, addressing an AIDS awareness meeting, attending a yoga conference. Mm -hmm. In 2016, he tweeted, There should only be one religion, the religion of humanity. Oh, wow. Profound. God. How do you say something like that and then plan to bomb someone? Okay, this is the dude. I'm going to show you a picture. Oh, boy. Oh. Mr. Neo himself. Exactly. Or he looks like the Terminator. Oh, he totally looks like a brown, skinny Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's a resemblance. Right? In the Terminator. Now just imagine the sunglasses off, the hair all disheveled in like one of those dirty tank tops and a lungi and just like, you know, crouched over a bomb like, oh, I'm going to get that. Ah, da, 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 da. Not as cute. It's not important how a person looks, but clearly his brain don't look too good. Yeah. He's a freaking idiot. And let me show you this picture, which oh. is the scene of the blast. Oh, damn. Everything's just destroyed. All the cupboards are open. And there's just shit everywhere just to for our listeners who can't see what we're looking at. But yeah, I mean, I'll post all this on Instagram. But yeah, it's it's a scene of utter destruction and chaos and. I feel bad even for the neighbors who had to run into that because I'm sure they have trauma from it all as well. For sure, yeah. Um, and this is the label on the parcel. The one that he corrected? Yes. He said, this is an RK Sharma. It's SK Sinha. In what? I mean... It looks like a doctor wrote it. It looks like SK Schnurf. Schnurf. Yeah. SK Schnurf. SK Schnurf. But it definitely looks like SK. That doesn't look like an R in what universe. Is that an R? Possible the police gave out wrong information to see, to filter out uh, uh, wrongful confessions and, yeah, and yeah. All, copycats and all that. Yeah. So the fact that he corrected them and offered an alternative was weird because they were like, why would you even care? This is fake. That is fake. Why are you trying to correct us on this? Uh, maybe he thought like, oh, I want them to take me seriously the rest of what I say. So I have to say one thing so that they know that I'm the guy. Yeah. That's the one, that's the part they could corroborate and they would yeah. know that he means business. Like he's right. not just some guy who read the news and sent in a letter. Yeah, some weird. That was a detail which was to establish his identity as the bomber. But not the bomber. But so, yeah. also maybe the Narcissism. Bomber. So confusing. Still a bit confused about, like, the wedding. Was he hoping to blow up more people? Or was he hoping that, like, because it would be mixed with a bunch of other uh, presents, that it would get sort of confused and lost a little bit more? Like, So he wanted not only to cause pain and loss to Sanjukta but for it to be a public spectacle he wanted to see the destruction and feel the power over Sanjukta in that moment and here's the clincher Alex mm. he was at the reception what so he would have watched it happen no he was at the reception probably waiting for the package to be delivered right then and there so he could watch the bomb Explode. Yikes! That's crazy. That's that's super psycho. He must have been so disappointed. Well, at least we get that. Like sweating bullets, waiting for it to happen, and then it doesn't happen. And big question mark. And yeah, that part really that sent chills down my spine. Makes you think. Who at your wedding wants you to die? <laughs> <laughs> They're there to watch. He was there to watch. He wanted to see it. He wanted to witness that death and destruction that was actually part of his defense when he was arguing for bail his attorney said that 
he was at the reception. Why would he do this? Right. Like, why would he endanger himself? Well, yes, because he's a psychopath. Yeah. That's what they do. That's exactly what they do. They want to be there at the scene of the crime. They want to be part of it all. Right. Okay, so this brings us to Bollywood Corner. Hmm. What have you got for us today? I don't know. I don't want to do like a bomb movie on this. That's like too on the nose. And yeah, I've been dying to somehow shoehorn this movie into our Bollywood corner since maybe episode one. I love this movie so much. It is such a good movie. Do it. And I'm just going to I'm going to recommend it. What's the theme? Maybe deception, lying, narcissism, revenge. If any of that seems on theme, this movie has it. Yep. Perfect. I think it works. It's called Anda Dhun or Blindly when you're doing something completely blindly. It is a 2018 movie. It's a black comedy crime thriller. I think it's available on Netflix if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, checking right now. Yeah. And so the filmmaker said he was faintly inspired by a short uh, French movie called, how do you say this, Alex? La Cordeur. La Cordeur, which is the piano tuner. La Cordeur. Hmm, okay. It's a French short film about a blind pianist. So that's just for the basic premise of the movie. The rest of it, of course, is original. And there's this blind pianist who teaches people how to play the piano. Stuff happens at the home, at one of the homes where he's teaching. And he's blind, so he shouldn't have seen anything. But, okay, I don't want to say anymore. (laughs) you have to see it you just don't know what's gonna happen next they're all flawed characters like you don't know who you're cheering for you question yourself like why am i cheering for this person to get away or they're all deceptive someone's killing someone and you're like oh that's fine get away you know we want you to get away watch this movie i don't want to give away any more clues it's just one of those tightly scripted mysteries that I don't want to unravel before you watch it. I don't want to spoil it for you. And uh, that's it for Bollywood Corner. Oh, yeah. Okay, so do the stuff, people. Follow us on our socials at Crimes from the East, same as our email and our website. Mm -hmm. Um, Remember to rate and review us once you give us a listen even if it's a two-star review and you think that we chat incessantly about non-important subjects <laughs> and it gets in the way of our storytelling we want to know we thank you for your two-star reviews although we would prefer your five-star reviews we have to talk about this <laughs> we got our first bad review yeah we got our first two-star review last week Everyone's feedback is valid. I don't uh, want to be defensive. I'll explain. Okay. Hey. Yeah. They said that the storytelling was good. So, okay. Read it and then. It yeah. says, good show. But can we tone down the chatter in between? Two stars. The incessant rants, random tidbits, jokes, all really get in the middle of good storytelling. When you're narrating, it's great. But I keep getting thrown off in the middle when you go off on trajectories again and again, leaving me impatient, annoyed, and dissatisfied overall. If we can just tone down on that a bit more, this show would be great. This show would be great. That's a compliment. Good storytelling. Love it. Good show. I am taking this. I think you underrated us, to be honest, dear listener. But maybe, basically, they want you to fire me, Pia. And me, myself, too. They want us to extricate (laughs) ourselves from this podcast. Is what I need to just take the script as. with the story and we need to automate it. We need to get one of those TikTok robots to read the whole thing and then we've got gold, clearly. And we are we are wow. good. We're golden. The thing is, <laughs> I mean, that two star seems a little aggressive. If it was three stars, it's kind of like meeting yeah. in the middle, you know? Like yeah. you're okay with us yeah. and you're willing to leave us room for improvement. Two yeah. stars is kind of like, you're done. You're done with us and you're like, I don't like it. Yes, we do have lots of rants, trajectories, tidbits, jokes, all of that stuff. Because that's us. That's our podcast. We're home a lot. Yes. <laughs> if you don't like that, it's probably because we're not the one for you. There are so many other podcasts who have exactly that style that you're looking for, which is 
straight up reading a story from start to end with no opinions or jokes or anything like that right i mean that's just you you gotta find what you like but like give us a chance at the same time you know we're learning too (laughs) <laughs> yeah, we'll try not to have too many sidebars. I hope you noticed in this episode, we had several. I mean, we talked a lot about mustard at the beginning, but we talk a lot about dumb shit at the beginning. So it's very easy to skip and get into the story. Yeah. Also, we're both Leos. Okay. So if you ask oh, us yeah. to like shut our mouths, <laughs> That's guess true. what? We're going to do the opposite. So you're probably going to have worse banter and incessant rants in the coming episodes um anyway i'll try i'll try not to have too many yeah we'll we'll think about it thanks for the thanks for the feedback thanks for the feedback no problem but the rest of you five star reviews come on go five or go home you know what actually quite a few people have uh left us ratings not reviews but ratings spotify now has Quite a few more ratings oh, yeah. than we had before. So thank you to everyone that rated. It really helps us. It really helps us be noticed and come up in other people's feed as a suggestion. Like, if you like this, you might also like that. But also thanks to our Patreon patrons who are helping us towards that eventual goal. All of our Patreons are absolute rock stars because they help pay for the hosting fees, the website fees, the digital editing all that fees so thank you so much without you i'd be even more worried about hosting and paying for all this stuff so yes our patreons are literal patron saints to us thank you very much um anything else you wanted to rant about alex i feel like i have maxed my incessantness for the day (laughs) there's so many trajectories i could go off on right now (laughs) yeah that's it for me join us again whenever the next episode is uploaded for another episode of crimes from the east your desi true crime podcast with a little masala Masala. and spice Spice. oh wait alex sidebar sidebar (laughs) before we go i wanted to add one more sidebar masala and spice is actually very redundant because masala means spice Spice. What I mean by that, <laughs> my intention for that was, I'm the masala and you're the spice. We're the same thing, just in different languages. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 that works. I um, begrudgingly accept. All right. I think we've uh, <laughs> we've upped our uh, d- d- dose of sidebars for this episode. This one was yep, especially shoehorned in for this show. Underscore one through one. <laughs> so once again. <laughs> 